We're back on the Sports Max Zone and we're turning our attention now to cricket. Legendary former West Indies captain Sir Clive Lloyd is suing the Ghana Chronicle newspaper for defamation. Sir Clive claims the government owned publisher maliciously attributed to him disparaging comments about all rounder Jason Holder in its March 13 publication. The story was carried under the headline Holder has outlived his usefulness in the position. Editor at the Guyana Chronicle, Tajaram Mahabir, says since the story was published online, they have taken several steps, including making an apology to Sir Clive, along with publishing a retraction. The Guyana Chronicle says it has also published an apology on the homepage of their online publication. Speaking on the Mason and Guest podcast, Sir Clive's attorney, Queen's Counsel Ralph Thorne, said regional newspapers must be more responsible with their reporting. This is what Ralph Thorne said. Uh, newspapers must be very careful how they portray our heroes. Sir Clive Lloyd is a West Indian hero, an authentic West Indian hero. And when a reporter is going to say to the world in an online edition that Sir Clive Lloyd spoke to him and he quoted Sir Clive Lloyd as having said that he uh, disavowed uh, Jason Holder, uh, that is unkind. Not only because Sir Clive Lloyd is a West Indian hero speaking about a West Indian captain, but Sir Clive Lloyd never said that. These men must not be defamed by newspapers simply because they have the power of the pen. So, um, George, the real story here is that in spite of the retraction by the Ghana Chronicle and uh, a fairly valiant effort on their part to try to, you know, correct the, the wrong, um, Ralph Thorne and Sir Clive Lloyd are pressing ahead with the lawsuit. You know, I... I, hmm, I don't know how to feel about this definitively, and I'll explain why quickly. Yes. On the one hand, you know my substantive hat as a PAJ man, PAJ president in Jamaica Press Association. Uh, it, it's automatic for me to feel sad when uh, a, a member of the, of, of the fraternity, this time an organization, an employer, is facing the situation that the Chronicle is facing. Uh, you know, it's automatic for me to feel that way. But at the same time, every human being is entitled to his or her good name. And Clive Lloyd is, Sir Clive Lloyd is no less than any other human being. So if the gentleman believes that his good name has been tarnished, has been damaged by the publication, then he has a right to seek redress. Uh, what is also adding to, 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 to my state is this. Based on what you just spoke of, the lengths that the Chronicle has gone to, to take the air out of the situation to make repair for what the damage that they have done was, then I'm also wondering why is it that Sir Clive is marching on? Could it be that it's a historical issue where he feels that over time newspapers have taken liberties with his name yes. and that he's saying, you know what, I need to teach somebody a lesson. So you've apologized, you've retracted, the editor, the, the, the author of the story has been suspended. All of that that you've done, I still am going forward. It may be the latter, but I'm still sad that, you know, the fourth estate finds itself in this position even as I say to you, Lance, that we in this profession know that we must always be responsible in reporting because we can't tarnish someone's good name because mm. nobody's going to tarnish mine. Yeah. You know what? The Ghana Chronicle, by all accounts, have accepted full responsibility for an erroneous report. And uh, the, the guilty writer, as you said, has been suspended. Um, you have to question, as an experienced journalist, George, how, how why... And under what circumstances can someone so um, depart from the, 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 the proper, you know, execution of, of journalism? So, you know, it, it, from, from one standpoint, if they have been so wrong in how they have executed, even with an apology, uh, as you just said, maybe Clive Lloyd just wants to make a statement here because um, it certainly would be a, a huge blow depending on the you know financial weight of the lawsuit uh, against the Guyana Chronicle very very um, well established newspaper in in Guyana of course Sir Clive Lloyd is a Guyanese as well so he may also be even further hurt by the fact that this is coming from his home country yeah and and, and given my experience reading judgments in cases such as these mm -hmm. and I have to make that clear because you know not representing that we are lawyers here or, or, or myself especially yeah. but the, the, the plea of mitigation that the Chronicle's attorneys could be poised to make that, well, Your Honor, we apologized, we retracted, we took action against the journalist in question who penned the story. 
the judge, the, the court, based on what I've seen in the past, could say one of two things, Lance. Either, all right, so you've, you, you did right, well, you attempted to do right by Mr. Lloyd yes. quickly, yes. and you didn't make a half-hearted attempt at apologizing or retracting. So that's good. So take a lesser sentence. Or it could be that they say, well, the judge says, well, what you did was so egregious. You shouldn't even have, you, this should never have even happened in the first place. Yeah. And your hand was so deep in the cookie jar that you could never have withdrawn it without traces of the cookie or crumbs on your hand. So you were caught red-handed anyway. You are so deep in it that the, 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 the swiftness with which you say you acted to repair, to make repair, has no bearing on this take the full punishment. It could go either way. Yeah. But it's sad, but at the end of it all, responsible journalism has to be a part of the modus operandi of every, every media outlet, every employee, at all times. It, ne it never takes a break, Lance. You know yeah. this better than most. And at the end of it all, mm -hmm. man and a woman, the only thing they have, their reputation, their good name, you can't mess with that. Yeah, we'll watch in the coming weeks how this story will unfold. But I did hear Ralph Thorne on the Mason and Guest show, and he sounded very, very passionate and very enraged by the Chronicle story. Now, we're still talking cricket. The former West Indies captain, Jason Holder, has been named as one of the five Wisden Cricketers of the Year. The 29-year-old Holder, along with England batsman Dom Sibley and Zach Crowley, Pakistan weekkeeper Mohamed Rizwan and Kent all-rounder Darren Stevens, were all given the esteemed award. A holder received universal praise and admiration for leading the West Indies during its tour of England in June 2020, the first international cricket tour amid the coronavirus pandemic. The Marylebone Cricket Club, MCC, also awarded West Indies with the 2020 Spirit of Cricket Award for sending both their men's and women's teams uh, to tour England during the pandemic, you may remember. So, uh, huge accolade here for Jason Holder. And uh, as you said, Kyron Pollard also gets uh, an award as the leading T20 cricketer. Of course, he has been tremendous in the past year, Kyron Pollard, celebrating his elevation to the white ball captaincy of the West Indies team at a time when Jason Holder has been relieved of the red ball captaincy. But a good story here for the West Indies, for sure. Oh, it's, 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 it's more than a good story, uh, Whitaker. For once, you, you, you understand things. I, I'm <laughs> saying that as an individual, as an individual, Jason Holder should... Look, for those of you who are in positions of leadership or mentorship, and for those of you who are in your, the early stage of your development and you're looking for a mentor, Jason Holder is as good as it gets in this part of the world, and here's why. This young man, when he came into the position of being West Indies captain, he didn't ask for it. It was foisted up on him, perhaps forced up on him. I almost said foisted like that pastor in that viral video in Jamaica some time ago, but scratch that. So he got a responsibility that was fit for a man. He was only a young man at the time. He has been criticized, pilloried from pillar to post, as they would say. And yet, amid all that, captaining a weak team, captaining a team of individuals that have struggled to gird themselves together and perform as a team mm -hmm. and against a very demanding cricket-loving public who have to be demanding given the lofty standards that West Indies cricket has set over the years. Amid all of that, he still emerged, as you said, at the top of the show, Lance as the world's number one test all-rounder, doing his best with what little he had to work with. Mm -hmm. As a man, we have seen Jason Holder grow up in front of us, and not many people who criticized him and wrote him off as a cricketer and as a captain have come to change their minds, change their perspectives about yes. him, and he has done that with grace. They have, there, there's no history of social media outbursts at people, no insults at people in authority, no insults at other players publicly, no insults at the cricket of him public who criticize them for the poor performances. He has worn it with poise, and this man has grown up. If this is not a role model, I don't know what a role model is, and I'm blinded to the concept. This man is, is a perfect example to people, young and old, growing up, of how to take on pressure, wear pressure, keep your head down, perform, 
and let the chips fall where they may. I say congratulations to Jason Holder. Yeah, I want to say too that I remember him from the 2010 ICC on the 19 World Cup when I saw him on a big stage for the first time. And of course, he was already six feet seven inches tall or so. <laughs> and I, I, I said to myself, oh, this, this looks to be the next Joel Garner because, you know, of his height and the way he was able to get balls from just back of length, rising up into the chest of the, uh, of the batsmen at, so, at the under-19 tournament. Um, the West Indies were beaten in the semifinals by Pakistan, but went on to win the third place playoff over Sri Lanka. He was the West Indies' leading wicket-taker at the time. But no one saw at that point, as far as I can remember, his batting ability coming through at that age. It was after that, and as you said, his... Um, very, very premature, if you want to call it, elevation to the captaincy, yes. which was a difficult period for him. He worked on his batting. We've seen him score a double hundred in test cricket. So he's now a genuine all-rounder after being an under-19 player that looked to be the next Joel Garner. For sure. Uh, can we talk about Pollard? Do we have time, Mr. Producer, to just mention? Yeah, look, <laughs> we've said on this program that Kyron Pollard, especially the two of us, well, especially both of us, that, and I go back to when we were picking the ultimate T20 team, we said... And I'm going to rec recall exactly what, what, what I certainly said, and I think we shared. And speak highly yeah. enough of him on the show. We're huge fans of Polly. Yeah, and I want to go back in time quickly before we end the segment that the first time he came to my attention was um, in the early 2000s. I think Bennett King was the coach of the West Indies team at the time, and Kyron Pollard in a four day fi fixture in the regional competition smashed a terrific hundred. I think it may have been against Barbados. I'm not too sure. Playing for Trinidad and Tobago, George, he smashed the ball all over the ground. And he looked, you know, at that time he was probably 20, 21 years old or so. But he, he, you could see that this was a player with strength and confidence. And Lara and, was a huge fan of his yeah, very and, early. And, yeah. and um, unfortunate that he didn't go on much in the Red Bull game after that. And um, it has taken his career some time to flourish in the way that it has now. But um, Kyron Pollard is a star and a genuine, genuine impact player for West Indies at the moment and the franchises that he represents around the world. Break time.